to do I had to steal a little time baby so I could spend it all on you Hello, my name's Gary Rosolo and I'm a guitar maker. Some people say I'm obsessed with guitars. Where do they get that idea? The obsession probably started uh, around my days as a student doing teacher training. And that was really the beginning of the love affair with wood. When I did my teacher training, I had a course clash and I ended up in the wood workshop and that was a godsend really because wood was not something very high in my in my kind of peripheral vision in my life uh, but when I did this course I actually completely fell in love with this amazing material and as a young guy I was in lots of bands and I was always a guitar spotter. I actually really enjoyed seeing lots of different types of guitars and different brands of guitars. Once I realised that wood was the material that uh, I really had a passion for, um, the next step was I said to my lecturer, Richard Johnson, I need to make a guitar. And once you, once that little guitar bites you and um, that's it you're hooked for life really i taught woodwork for a few years and technical drawing technical drawing was a, a subject that i loved as well uh, these days i find it a, a necessity because i draw all my instruments full size before i make them uh, and it's quite important to be able to sketch and draw uh, in order to create. Um, I think if you ask anyone in any creative medium, the, the commonality between all those is being able to draw. Uh, having a love for art, I enrolled at art school and with support of my school, I was able to eventually get a fine arts degree. That was probably critical in honing my design skills uh, to be able to uh, draw something and have a really fine line, a good line. So I ended up making this piece of furniture that I'm sitting on now as my final year degree piece in three-dimensional design. And of course it's related to guitars. <laughs> um, uh, something that I seem to always come back to. My career as a luthier really starts with doing guitar repairs. After I built my first couple of instruments uh, and having a couple of commissions I realised that there was a lot of bread and butter turnover to be had doing repair work and it's such a solid grounding in what makes a guitar tick is being able to have lots of different guitars come through your hands and, and work on them and be able to analyse them and deconstruct them. Deconstruction is important. You need to be able to deconstruct before you can construct. I bought a book on a trip to Melbourne once in a music shop called Acquired by Angels and it was the story of D'Angelico. I'd already built my first arch top and I had a kind of, look it's hard to describe, I had a kind of real feeling doing the arch top guitars that was something that uh, I really enjoyed, I really loved, it kind of spoke to me. And then reading this book about D'Angelico and D'Aquisto's life in New York, I thought, ah, oh, wow, this is it. The archtop guitar for me was absolutely the ultimate. 
they are beautiful things. They are constructed with carving both the back and the top and creating the F holes and making the bridges and the tail pieces out of ebony and then putting the strings on and making these things come to life. It's a fantastic thing. It, it's amazing to create out of blocks of wood, you know, right from just a, a block of wood to an arch top guitar. It's just, yeah, a fascinating uh, story, a fascinating road to travel down. As a musician, in, in my musical kind of life, I was always uh, a singer in the band and I could play a little bit of guitar. I wasn't really what I would call a guitar player per se. And it wasn't until much later, I mean, I knew a lot, of, I knew chords. I could bang out the old three chord wonders, no problem. Uh, guitarists are drawn to kind of blues because, you know, the one, four, five chord structure is lovely, the pentatonic scale, beautiful to solo with. So I, I taught myself by listening um, and working songs out and really analysing what was going on, how to play a guitar, and suddenly my ears opened up to tone. And I think that's the most critical factor for anyone making guitars. Uh, first of all, you need to be able to draw. Second of all, you need to have a good ear for tone so that you can hear exactly what sounds are being produced and be able to improve on them. Uh, it's all very well to bang a lot of strings on a plank of plywood, but you'll find it just won't cut it. <laughs> People think, oh, electric guitars, are you just plug them in, the pickups do all the work. No, the electric guitar has to sound really good before you plug it in. And that's the, the key factor. And, and you have to be able to know what does sound good. Wood is a very interesting material because it is very acoustic. And sometimes you can, you can touch a piece of wood and just rub it with your fingers and it generates sound. And it generates sound quite loudly. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting thing. Pores in the timber will generate really good tone. So that's why I use, like using woods like mahoganies and uh, blackwoods for electric guitars. Now blackwood is a, a slightly higher pitched wood than uh, mahogany. So when you tap it, you'll get a much higher um, pitch tone. The other wood is uh, a timber-like maple, which is quite bright. And Gibson got onto this early by putting a maple cap onto mahogany to take a good mahogany kind of porous tone and add the brightness of maple. And in fact, the very early uh, Gibson Les Pauls were all painted gold and they did that in a serious effort to hide from the <laughs> the other manufacturer <laughs> in the in the mid 50s what wood they were using so they painted them gold um, to hide the maple on the top maple and mahogany are a very good combination for electric guitars now blackwood kind of slots in between those two right in the middle the problem you'll come across is weight. Now some mahoganies are very light and some blackwoods are very heavy. So you need to work out how you're going to make the thing reasonably light. A lot of those early Gibsons, we're talking Les Pauls here, can weigh nine or ten pounds and I think people have stooped backs from playing <laughs> those guitars. Uh, in terms of uh, softwoods, uh, a good quality spruce will give you a nice, rich tonal range from bass through mid-range to treble. I've tried King Billy Pine. Uh, it's a similar kind of wood to spruce, different colour of course, but it has similar 
um, properties. But at the end of the day, Spruce is the ultimate for soundboard sound generation. In order to become a, a good guitar maker, I think there are a few things you need to do. You need to really be able to work wood for a start. Um, it's, it's an important thing, I think, to be able to maybe make some furniture, to be able to uh, accurately plane, cut, shape, drill, sand, manipulate this material. And making furniture is a good way of honing those skills. Guitars are really sculptural. The, the functional sculpture, in a sense, They've got to fit your body, they've got to fit your hand and you, you're playing. I guess the other thing that I would recommend anyone is that if they're starting out and they want to build guitars and they've got a bit of knowledge about how guitars work and how they're set up, is to actually do repair work. Repair work is the, the best way to cut your teeth in the guitar making world because if you repair a guitar, you, you are versatile in the way that you problem solve and the way that you uh, develop your skills in setting up the guitars for playability. And that's a big factor in guitar making. They have to be a very playable item. It's no good building a guitar that you can't play. <laughs> so. When you build guitars, and you, you're in the, the business of um, doing commissions for people and or selling instruments, then I guess the biggest reward is seeing them played on, on the stage. Uh, I think one of the most satisfying things that I ever experienced was uh, a young guy who um, whose parents moved to Tasmania, he was from the UK, and he ended up with one of my guitars, and he became a session musician, ended up in the States, did a recording for a Alanis Morissette, and on the back of that CD wrote, my guitar was sonically perfect, thank you very much, Gary Rosolo. That, that was, that, you can't, yeah. <laughs> can't put that into words how good that is. <laughs> the list of things that I want to do in terms of the instruments that I make is quite long and I don't know if I'm going to have the time to get to it because you know orders you got to love them they get in the way <laughs> of what you want to do for yourself. I wish I'd started a lot younger um, and I wish I had another life to go around because uh, one more time would be great. Mm -hmm.